There is a crisis unfolding right now in states that have implemented abortion bans and things are getting scary, not just for people seeking abortions, we're already there, but also for people who want to have babies. My name is Brittany Page, and this is The Page Perspective. Please subscribe to the channel, share with a friend. I'm not sure what my next goal should be for subs. Should it be 50,000? Should we go big, like 100,000? I'm just excited to be growing this community of people who are passionate about these important issues impacting our society. So thank you for joining these conversations. You can also follow me on all the different social media websites, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and that new one, Threads. I'm at Brittany E. Page on all of them. So states with strict abortion bans are finding themselves in a dangerous position. Current maternal health care doctors are fleeing and new medical students are avoiding these states with abortion bans. We will soon be seeing a pattern develop in red states where maternal health care deserts are increasing and maternal health care deserts are areas where there are no hospitals offering obstetric care, no obstetric providers, no birth centers. One notable example of this impending doom can be found in Idaho. Recently, two hospitals announced they would be closing their labor and delivery units. In one case, Idaho's strict abortion ban was called out directly in the press release. Bonner General Health in announcing the discontinuation of labor and delivery services said, quote, highly respected, talented physicians are leaving. Recruiting replacements will be extraordinarily difficult. In addition, the Idaho legislature continues to introduce and pass bills that criminalize physicians for medical care nationally recognized as the standard of care. Consequences for Idaho physicians providing the standard of care may include civil litigation and criminal prosecution, leading to jail time or fines. We have made every effort to avoid eliminating these services. We hoped to be the exception, but our challenges are impossible to overcome now. This now means that people living in Sandpoint, Idaho, will have to drive at least 46 miles to reach the closest hospital offering this kind of care. And it isn't just Idaho. Although we haven't seen really extensive reporting on the number of doctors who are leaving their profession because of these abortion bans, we're starting to see glimpses of how bad this could get. For example, let's look at this incredible reporting from Slate on the state of things in Texas. Quote, the inability to provide what they say is the standard of care to pregnant patients is taking a toll personally and professionally, according to interviews with more than a dozen doctors and nurses across Texas. And it's causing many like Wilson to reconsider the future of their career in the state. Almost every provider I spoke with for this story has thought about leaving their practice or leaving Texas in the weight of SBA and Dobbs. Several have already moved or stopped seeing patients here, at least in large part because of the abortion bans. Quote, if I ever touch a patient again, it won't be in the state of Texas, said Charles Brown, chair of the Texas District of the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, who stopped seeing patients last year after decades working as a maternal fetal medicine specialist. So this is wildly concerning and tragic that doctors who have been practicing for decades now feel unable to be effective, unable to provide for their patients because of these toxic abortion bans. And what happens when these doctors leave uh, and, and the hospitals close their labor and delivery units? More maternity care deserts are created. And this hurts people who want to have babies. According to reporting from CNN, maternity care deserts have been linked to a lack of adequate prenatal care or treatment for pregnancy complications, and even an increased risk of maternal death for a year after giving birth. How many women of childbearing age are living in maternity care deserts? Data from the March of Dimes shows more than 2.2 million women of childbearing age live in maternity care deserts. That is 1,119 counties that have no hospital offering obstetric care, no birth centers, no obstetric providers. So not only are current doctors seeking to leave states with strict abortion bans, 
but medical school students are avoiding residency training programs in states with abortion bans. An analysis from the Association of American Medical Colleges found a larger decline in medical students applying for residency in states with abortion bans compared to states without abortion bans. How big was this decline? Almost 11%. In states with complete abortion bans, there was a 10.5% decrease in applications for OBGYN residencies, compared with a 5.2% decrease in applications in states with no restrictions. More than double. And this matters because doctors tend to stay where they're trained. If you can't recruit medical students to your residency programs in states with abortion bans, and doctors who are already trained are leaving, what exactly do states with abortion bans plan to do as they are facing down this crisis? Many of these states already have the highest maternal mortality rates in the country. Are they going to follow Idaho's lead and disband their maternal mortality review committees? Ignore the problem. Pretend it's not happening. Are Republicans thinking about this? Are they worried about this? One of my favorite books one of the most important books that I've read is The Turnaway Study, 10 Years, 1,000 Women, and the Consequences of Having or Being Denied an Abortion. This is by Dr. Diana Green Foster, who led the landmark study that compared the life outcomes for women who were able to obtain abortions with women who were denied abortions. And because of luck and being able to do what I do here on my podcast, I Doubt It, I had the privilege to interview Dr. Diana Green Foster about her important work. It was before Roe was overturned, and I highly recommend that you listen to it. But there was a part in this book where she talks about former Ohio State Representative Jim Beakey and an interview that he did in 2012 with Al Jazeera. And at the time, he was co-sponsoring a bill to ban abortion for as early as six weeks before many women even have the slightest clue that they might be pregnant. Now, this was a telling interview, and I was actually able to dig it up so you can see exactly what we're dealing with, with these Republicans who want to ban abortion. In this clip, he's asked why women might want to get abortions. Seems like an easy enough question to answer, right? Watch this. What do you think makes a woman want to have an abortion? Well... There's probably a lot of, I, I, I'm not a woman, so I, I, I'm, I'm thinking now, if I'm a woman, why would I want to, yeah. I, uh, some of it has to do with economics. A lot of it has to do with economics. Uh, I don't know, I've never, I, it's, it's a question I've never even thought about. It's a question I've never even thought about. He never even thought about why women might want abortions. The thing that he wants to ban, he never even thought about it. I mean, how common do you think this is? Well, it must be pretty common because just a few months ago, the fantastic health policy correspondent, Sarah Varney, with Kaiser Health News, who often has her reports air on PBS's NewsHour, well, she was interviewing Idaho State Rep Mark Sauter about the maternal health providers fleeing the state of Idaho due to the state's strict abortion ban. Sarah specifically asks him if he thought about how the abortion ban he supported would impact obstetric care in his state. You can probably predict where this is going, but let's let's give him a shot to explain himself. State Representative Mark Sauter, a Republican, lives in Sandpoint. He says he hadn't thought much about the abortion ban. It really wasn't up high on my radar other than be a, I'm a pro-life guy and uh, I ran that way, um, but I didn't see it as a, had a real, having a real big community impact. Then he started talking with local doctors, including Amelia Huntsberger. What I'm wondering is, for you personally, did you think about abortion as it relates to obstetric care for pregnant women? No, I, I, don't, I don't think I... I, you know, it's like anything, you, you get exposed to something, all of a sudden you go, wow, there's, there's a different way to look at this. So it wasn't until the abortion ban was already in place and doctors started fleeing the state and maternity health units were shutting down that he started talking to doctors about the negative impact the ban was having on obstetric care. That was when he finally thought about how an abortion ban would impact obstetric care. 
Guys, it sounds like we've got an order of operations problem. And look, I'm a champion of changing your mind when the evidence changes or when your understanding of the evidence changes. I've been wrong a lot in my life and I hope to continue my journey as a lifelong learner where I'm sure I will continue to change my mind. But come on, man, these are life and death policies before taking a position on these things that impact healthcare of human beings. You'd think you'd go to the source, the doctors. In that clip, you heard the reporter mention Dr. Amelia Huntsberger as one of the doctors that Mark Sauter talked to post-abortion ban. She is a board-certified obstetrician and gynecologist who worked at Bonner General, the aforementioned hospital that closed its maternity unit, citing Idaho's abortion ban. Earlier in this reporting, there was an interview with Dr. Huntsberger where she told the story of a patient with a ruptured ectopic pregnancy that is a pregnancy where the fertilized egg is growing outside the uterus. I want you to hear this story in her own words. We need to move quickly to stabilize her and to save her life. When I got to the operating room and I removed the ectopic pregnancy, which at that point was problematic legally, I knew that I needed to do what my oath requires me to do to prioritize the safety of my patient. And I also knew that I was putting myself theoretically, potentially, at risk of felony charges which would have a minimum of two years in jail, loss of my medical license for six months. Dr. Huntsberger and her family have decided to leave Idaho. So this caring, passionate doctor who has delivered babies for over a decade in the state of Idaho is leaving because she can no longer put herself and her family at risk for simply doing her job and saving her patients when the threat of imprisonment and loss of her medical license is hanging over her head. And she's just one. And this is just the beginning. Doctors in states with abortion bans across the country are seeing the writing on the wall with these abortion bans. Current doctors don't feel it's safe to practice. Students looking to complete residency don't feel these states are safe to practice in either. And who will suffer? People who want abortions, sure, but also people who want to have babies. People who need preventative care, like pap smears and screenings for STDs, things that you need to ensure that you're healthy for having a baby. And Republicans, they claim to care about these babies, right? If that's true, why didn't any of them think (laughs) about how these abortion bans would impact babies and the people who want to birth them? Listen, there's no pretty little bow to put on any of this. It's scary, it's dangerous, but it's all the more reason to stay in the fight and say it loud and proud that abortion is healthcare. We shouldn't be afraid to use the word abortion. That is what we want protected and we need to keep fighting for it because abortion bans hurt all of us. There is some good news on this front. 538 recently looked at the ways that Americans' views of abortion have changed since Roe was overturned. And it looks like Americans have become more supportive of abortion rights. Quote, many Americans, including women, young people, and Democrats, are reporting more liberal views on abortion than major pollsters have seen in years. Even conservatives, although the changes are slight, are increasingly supportive of abortion rights. There are other signs that longstanding views are shifting. For instance, Americans are more open to the idea of unrestricted third trimester abortion than they were even a year ago. We only make this progress by continuing to fight. So share this video with a friend, someone who might be unaware of the connection between these abortion bans and decreasing access to maternal care. Someone who maybe never even thought about why a woman might want to get an abortion. Anyone, really. We need to keep pushing for what we know is right and change course. What do you think? I'd love to know. You can call and leave a voicemail 657-464-7609, or you can send an email to idoubtit at dollamore.com. Please support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash idoubtitpodcast for any dollar a month. Every little bit helps. We also have 10% off when you pay uh, your annual amount up front. So you can certainly take advantage of that. I appreciate you all so much and cannot wait to hear from you on this. Take care and I will see you next time.